We're going to learn about ourselves. This should interest you, Arnold. I can't take the pressure. It all began when Ms. Frizzle showed our class a film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start because we knew Ms. Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. A film strip is only the beginning, you know. Yeah, I bet she has books about this too. When's recess? The very next day, the Frizz made us do an experiment on our own bodies. Ooh, weird. Then she announced that we were going on a class trip to the science museum. We were going to see an exhibit about how our bodies get energy from the food we eat. Your cells need energy to help you grow, move, talk, think, and play. Just being in Ms. Frizzle's class takes all my energy. The trip started out like any other trip. We rode to the museum in the old school bus. Along the way, we stopped at a park for lunch. Leftover fish sticks? Ick! I'll trade you these terrific fish sticks for that horrible peanut butter and banana sandwich. Forget it! Take a look at her shoes! Please, I'm eating. When it was time to go, everyone got back on the bus. Everyone but Arnold. He was still at the picnic table, daydreaming and eating a bag of Cheesy Weezies. When you eat, your body digests the food, so your cells can use it to make energy. Hurry up, Arnold, called Ms. Frizzle. She reached for the ignition key, but instead she pushed a strange little button nearby. Arnold's really out to lunch. At once, we started shrinking and spinning through the air. From inside, we couldn't see what was happening. All we knew was that we landed suddenly. Gulp. Hey, where's the bus? And then we were going down a dark tunnel. We had no idea where we were. But as usual, Miss Frizzle knew. She said we were inside a human body, going down the esophagus, the tube that leads from the mouth to the stomach. Most of us were too upset about leaving Arnold behind to pay much attention. Where's Arnold? He got left! That's what happens when you eat junk food. I thought we were going to the museum. There's been a slight change of plans. We're being digested instead. We are now passing into the stomach, said Ms. Frizzle. It wasn't exactly quiet in there. The walls of the stomach moved in and out, churning and mashing the food into a thick liquid. The bus was turning round and round, and digestive juice splashed the windows. Now we knew how it felt to be a hamburger. Roll up your windows, children! Yuck! Ms. Frizzle drove to the bottom of the stomach. We'll drive through this opening to the small intestine, she said. In the small intestine, food is broken down into molecules, tiny enough for the body cells to use. I want to go home. But this is educational. Does education have to be this messy? I don't feel so good. Maybe it was something I ate. Poor kid. The small intestine was a coiled-up hollow tube. The inner walls of the tube were covered with tiny fingers called villi. In the villi are tiny blood vessels. Food molecules are taken into these blood vessels, said Ms. Frizzle. Once the food is in the blood, it can travel all over the body. We felt ourselves getting even smaller. And Ms. Frizzle started driving into one of the villi. She was going straight into a blood vessel. 